What's up guys, Flynn McKinney here. Today I'm going to be doing a team building video around SD Timid Carton. This is actually a really, really interesting set that I made a team around a while ago, but I recently passed the team to Joey. He did a live with it and a lot of people seemed to like it and there was a lot of response on his video that I should do a team building video uh, of this team. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And I also just want to say thank you to whoever subscribed to my channel from Joey's video. Uh, it's very kind of you. I gained like uh, like 20, 20 plus subscribers in a single day and it was really, really great for me. We have 900 subscribers now, so I'm really hoping that we can get 1K subscribers soon. So yeah, thank you to everyone who has been supporting me for this time. Anyway, we're gonna jump right into the video. So this set is gonna be around SD Timid Cartana. Now what's the point of using Timid on a Pokemon that's a physical attacker. The point is Beast Boost. So Kartana hits a max speed of 348. If you want Kartana to get a, a boost from speed, you would actually have to reduce its attack to be timid and actually have 19 attack IVs. That way the attack set is 347. So every time Kartana gets a kill, it'll boost its speed. This is actually really, really dangerous with Sword Stance because Kartana is still very strong at, oh, whoops, three, um, 347 attack. It's still decently strong, a little weaker than Garchomp, even though his, yeah, the attack set's basically similar to that of a Garchomp. And the speed is actually a really, really nice stat. One speed boost is all you really need to start snowballing. And Kartana also gains a ton of bulk with the extra EVs. 248 HP lets it set up on a lot of stuff much easier and it's it's really really dangerous One speed boost is oftentimes all you need to just start snowballing, which is why it's so effective I'm just gonna be using standard coverage dual stabs and sacred sword and I'm also gonna be using a phytanium Z This allows me to hit stuff steals especially like a metagross genesect Celesteel a skarmory stuff like those extra hard and just power through them because Cortana does not have I'm not investing into its sky high attack I'm actually reducing it why do my IVs keep resetting um, you got to be careful of that but um because I'm reducing it I want to have that extra power to just break through teams I have also used Steelium Z this helps you break through stuff like Amoongus, Venusaur, Tangrowth but I think Phytanium Z is overall the better choice uh, especially since Celesteel is really really annoying to this team. Now one thing I wanted to do to support Kartana was just break down all those physical attackers or sorry physical balls or like, like stuff like Lando, Skarmory, Celesteela, uh, all, break all those down so that Kartana could set up. This Garchomp also lures in fairy types like Tapu Fini, Tapu Bulu which Kartana generally has a pretty easy time setting up on. So that's why I chose Garchomp. They're really really good partners I think. Um, Garchomp just breaks a ton and also tends to invite and stuff that Kartana can set up on while also removing a lot of Kartana answers. So it's a really, really nice combination. I'm actually going to be using a Life Orb SD set. This just gives me a lot of power with uh, Fire Fang. Um, so it's a, it's a really strong breaker. He also is pretty good at breaking stall Kartana and Garchomp. So it's really, really powerful. Now I do need a rocker since my Garchomp is offensive without rocks. It's not that bulky either. Lando is basically the best one to use. It, there's oftentimes very little reason not to use Lando. Um, I'm going to be using a set with Toxic. Toxic lets me hit um, flying types like Mandibuzz, Mantine, Zapdos, which also tend to be annoying to Kartana, especially Zapdos and Mandibuzz. So, Toxic is really nice for those, also lets me hit opposing Lando, especially Double Dance Landos helps me make sure I can get some good chip on those. HP Ice is also a decent option, but I don't like it uh, because I, I don't prefer to Toxic because Kartana actually does check Zygarde pretty well, especially with Sacred Sword and that insane bulk to take 1000 arrows, and also the fact that um, just like Zapdos and Mandibuzz would be really really hard to break without. I've had Toxic help me in a ton of situations, so I'm just going to keep it like that. Um, I'm just going to use uh, this spread. 28 Spideth is something you should always run. It guarantees that you'll live a Life Orb HP Ice from Tapu Koko, and it also guarantees you'll live a Draco Meter from Life Orb Latix, which is really really nice benchmark. Uh, I'm just going to hit 216 defense as a jump point and put the rest in speed with an impish nature. Now next I needed, um, I wanted a fast attacker, notice my fastest spawn is Kartana, and I also wanted something that'll kind of push other people to go to 
physical attackers, knockoff users, because you'll notice that Cortana can set up really well on those. It's, it doesn't take boosted damage from knockoff and has sky high physical defense, but its special defense is pretty crap. So the reason that's basically the reason why I chose Zam. Zam is just really, really strong on offense, really, really dangerous to offensive teams, and also very dangerous to fat teams because Calm Mind can boost its special attack really really high so it's it's really quite dangerous uh, it's just a standard calm mindset and i think it pairs well with cartana especially next i needed several things first of all you notice you look at my team it's extremely prone to Feramosa. Can, Feramosa can just completely run through my team sweep it completely in general any setup sweepers that can outrun my zam and ko my Cartana, Lando and stuff, they can just roll through me. So I felt like I needed some priority. I also noticed especially like Mega Metagross in general, well not in general, specifically Mega Metagross is also a kind of big threat because it's hard for Cartana to kill without prior damage. With Ice Punch it can threaten Chomp and Lando, especially since he gets the speed boost um, immediately. And Zam can't Oko with Shadow Ball and can be threatened by Bullet Punch, if, especially if it's weakened. So that's why I felt I also, in general, needed a Water type attacker and I didn't have a Dark type as well. So I thought Ash Greninja was a really, really solid choice. The reason I'm choosing Ash Greninja is because um, I want to have Water Shuriken. Uh, I'm very particular about my move orders, so you can, as you can see, I'm playing it there. But uh, I'm going to be using a spec set. I think it fits well with uh, Ash Greninja because with Ash Greninja you generally are hitting your stabs or water shuriken most of the time and I actually don't even have any other move. I'm going to use U-turn. Ice Beam is also good here. Um, if you didn't know, Ash Greninja can't use, uh, it doesn't have access to its move tutor moves uh, like uh, regular Protean Greninja does, so no gunk shot, no low kick, anything like that. And hidden powers just aren't that strong on it without Protean, so you're either going to use Ice Beam or U-Turn on Ash Greninja. I'm using U-Turn because I just don't really click Ice Beam, and U-Turn is nice. You can hit Hoopa, you can just U-Turn out of other like mods if you don't want to stay in, but you want to activate Ash Form and just get that revenge kill and the momentum. Stuff like that. So yeah, Ash Greninja is really, really dangerous, very good. Water Shuriken has saved me a ton of times, and he, he's a really strong mon too, and especially dangerous for his offense. Now lastly, you look at my team, you realize that it's completely run over by like Scarf, uh, Tapu Lele, or something like that. Uh, in general, like, it doesn't have a lot of bulk, the only fat mon is Lando, and it doesn't have a Scarf of any kind. And I also noticed like Dragon types especially can like run through uh, fairies even too, because Cartana is completely reliant on handling those. And it doesn't have good special defense, so like stuff like Tapu Lele completely destroys. Uh, I suppose opposing Ash Greninja is also pretty dangerous, that's another reason why I'm using Timid Alakazam. So for the last one, I decided to go with Magirna. Magirna is really, really, really fat, and it's perfect. You could switch into Ash Greninja at least once, you can switch into Tapu Lele many times, you can take hits from Genesect, from Metagross, you can take hits from a ton of things and just dish back a ton of damage. So I'm actually going to be using an Assault Vest just to buff up that bulk even more, give, give this Magirna a ton of utility. I'm going to be using Flora Cannon, Flash Cannon, Volt Switch is really really great because it grabs momentum on a ton of things since Magirna just forces so many switches, it's so strong, so bulky, it's not too fast, but it's, it's slow, but it's not super slow. It's fast, like it's, it has a, it has a good speed tier, so it's pretty nice. And for my last slot, usually you run um, Aura Sphere, but I'm actually going to be using HP Fire. This is really nice to hit Genesect and also Scizor. You notice my team doesn't really have much for Scizor, other than if Chomp goes down or like in general, Scizor is kind of dangerous too, and especially Genesect. I like doing this versus Genesect. Uh, if I tend, I sometimes lead Magirna versus Scarf versus opposing Genesect if I think there's Scarf. Because uh, as you can see, Genesect can be quite dangerous to this team, especially since it's unpredictable. So yeah, um, as for spread, uh, I'm going to be running uh, enough speed to outrun Tran. Um, not that much. I want to have slow volt switches versus stuff like Venusaur and stuff like that, so I'm not running too much speed. I think I have this much speed, and the rest goes in HP, and this just bumps up the bulk. And yeah, that's going to be the team, so 
yeah, I think that covers pretty much everything. It's a pretty straightforward build. It, it didn't obviously didn't come to me this quickly, but um, it's offense, so you play it offensively. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously you're gonna play it offensively. The thing is, I don't think it's heavily prediction reliant, simply because the way the mons pair together, it's very easy to set up a sweep for one guy, set up a, set up a sweep for another guy, kill this with that guy, then pivot to this guy and then move to that like I feel like the flow of the game tends to be really really natural then it for me at least but you do need to be careful that you're not giving stuff like like I don't know RP Genesect a free rock polish after Magirna has been weakened stuff like that you got to be aware uh you got to make sure that nothing's gonna sweep while psychic terrain is up and you need water shirk and revenge kill because you let it set up by by doing a certain thing or something like that there's no actually choice items on this team except for greninja which is really nice too that helps with offense um so yeah that's gonna be the team hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions just leave it in the comments i'll i'll answer them and i'll probably do a suspect live with this um team as well so look forward to that and once again thank you to everyone who subscribed to me i really really appreciate everyone everyone who's been supporting me like you guys are the reason i keep on going and keep making videos so yeah that's it see you guys later